Paris, the Austrian ambassador to France, and of course, I would like to welcome as first guest Doris Lang Meyerhofer, the city chancellor and also the member and the, ma uh, the chair of the Ars Electronica board for her welcome speech. Doris, please. Yeah, a uh, very warm welcome to the Ars Electronica Festival, a very warm uh, welcome here in the deep space to the Mona Lisa exhibition. Welcome in Linz in the UNESCO City of Media Arts. We are so proud to have you here in our city. And it's so full here in the deep space, so much people are here and that's great for us and for the Ars Electronica team, thanks. Welcome to Planet B, a different life is possible, but how? That's the big question in this festival. And uh, this days, thousands, artists, scientists, engineers and activists from all over the world are here and discussed this question and present a huge number of media arts projects like this. When we discuss our future, we build on our cultural heritage, I think. So I'm very excited of a very special project, this presentation of Mona Lisa at the Deep Space, an immersive exhibition. I'm honored to welcome the ambassador of France in Austria, Gilles Pecou and uh, also Philip Sutter from the French Embassy. Thank you very much for supporting this project and bringing it to Linz. Thanks so much. Applause. <laughs> and a very warm welcome to the creators and presenters of the Mona Lisa project. Our special guests from Paris, from Musée du Louvre, from Grand Palais Immersif, and the head of project Mona Lisa. Thank you so much for this cooperation. We are so proud. <laughs> Why is the Mona Lisa the most famous painting in the world? Why? The exhibition is an invitation to rediscover Leonardo Da Vinci's masterpiece through digital media and the huge dimension of deep space. It is an invention to deep into new aspects of this painting, of this great painting. I am sure if Leonardo da Vinci would live now, he would be a great media artist and a superstar of Ars Electronica, <laughs> I think so, who gives us inspired answers to the question of the festival. This question, a different life is possible, but how? And thank you so much to have you here. Enjoy. Thank you, Doris Langmeierhofer. And you've seen we're really blown away that I've already made you the Austrian ambassador to France. But of course, you are the French ambassador to Austria. Please welcome Mr. Gilles Beco. <laughs> Our diplomacy is a reciprocal one. Uh, es ist mir uh, uh, immer eine große Freude nach uh, uh, Linz zu kommen, wo ich uh, bereits oft war. Sehr uh, geehrte Frau Stadträtin für Kultur, sehr uh, uh, Madame Langmeierhofer, sehr geehrter Herr Generaldirektor Dr. Stoker, sehr geehrter Herr Direktor uh, Herr Bauer, Monsieur le conservateur en chef du Musée du Louvre, cher Vincent de Lieuvin, Monsieur le directeur du Grand Palais Immersif, cher Robert Ami, Madame la chef de projet à la Réunion des musées nationaux, chère Christelle Terrier, Monsieur le conseiller culturel de l'ambassade, directeur de l'Institut français, cher Philippe Sutter, chers et chers collègues de l'Institut français ici présents, chers et chers amis, et vous tous de Linz et d'ailleurs. Es ist mir heute auch eine besondere Ehre, hier im Arts Electronica Center ein großes französisches Museum, mehrere französische Kultureinrichtungen 
und unseren Leben. Leonardo da Vinci mit einem seiner Meisterwerke zu begleiten. Das sich mehr denn je als ein großes europäisches Meisterwerk erweist. What uh, <coughs> does it mean for us together and for our bilateral diplomacy taking from Paris our dear Mona Lisa and putting her in immersion in Linz? If I may, if I may, I will just limit my answer to three words. Cooperation, it has been already told and said and, very good, and in a very good way, rediscovery and democratization. It is, <coughs> in fact, always a privilege for an ambassador to integrate a project clearly illustrating our bilateral cooperation. I am allowed to think and to declare that Mona Lisa is today the image, <coughs> not to, to say the allegory of our partnership, our Zusammenarbeit, our cooperation, cooperation between our dynamic team of l'Institut Francais of Austria and the dynamic and bright one of Ars Electronica Center. Cooperation between Ars Electronica, Le Grand Palais, Le Louvre, La Villette. La Réunion des Musées Nationaux. And let me greet two general directors, Laurence Descartes and Didier Fusilier, I had as a regular and friendly cultural and educational partners in my previous missions in Paris. This cooperation, thanks to, you, to our team and thanks to uh, the spectacular commitment of l'Institut Francais and the other partners, has to be at the heart of a new and important cooperation between as French cities and institutions and the city, the museum and the universities of Linz. But the meaning of this common project is to be really a projection at the crossroads of art and tech to enlighten un chef d'oeuvre de la Renaissance, a Renaissance artwork. I'm sure that every visitor in the world thinks that everything has been told, everything has been written about La Joconde. And above all, after the great manifestations of the year of Leonardo. But let me add, even in a pedestrian way, that we know perfectly how a chef d'oeuvre has always something to tell us. Such a technological approach enables to discover or to rediscover an iconic painting with a new perspective, combining immersion and interaction, using innovative instruments as, such as the deep space, BK, and everything allows to break, to break with physical borders. Everything is a, a way of having the awareness awareness that international dimensions of arts are really present. Why? But why doing this? Sure, to overcome new technical and aesthetic boundaries. Sure. But it is not sufficient. It's not enough to be sure to overcome these limits. The real aim is to extend art access beyond the walls of classical museums, even if we love classical museums, it's clear, to be a vector of democratization, to embolden with new technologies, new audiences, in new places, in new cities, using, for instance, the familiarity to technology of the use in all the countries, but not only. And finally, to develop new form of research about iconic pictures, which is developing these new forms of research and even academic research, which is equally a way of democratization of art. Voilà pourquoi, and let me switch to my own language to close. 
Voilà pourquoi, mesdames et messieurs, chers et chers amis, voilà pourquoi mettre en immersion la belle Florentine, Lisa Gerardini, entre les rives de l'Arnaud, celle de la Seine et celle du Danube. Le faire, c'est permettre à la diplomatie, grâce à vous tous ici présents, grâce à nos institutions, grâce à nos équipes, le faire, c'est permettre à la diplomatie de réaliser l'un de ses objectifs majeurs au cœur de l'Europe, de l'appartenance commune, c'est-à-dire que la pérégrination vivante de notre patrimoine commun doit être accessible au plus grand nombre. Merci à Leonardo, merci à vous, au nom de l'Institut français, au nom de l'Ambassade de France et en notre nom à tous. Thank you, Your Excellency, for this kind introduction. And uh, it's now time to turn our eyes into the immersive exhibition. I would like to welcome on stage uh, the General Director of the Grand Palais Immersive, Roi Amit, to give us the first glimpse of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, just a few words to say that Grand Palais Immersive is a member of the Réunion des Musées Nationaux Grand Palais Group, uh, which produce and distribute a new format of exhibition, uh, the one uh, that you'll see uh, right away. Um, our lineup is to abord subjects from main cultural and artistic issue, always with a contemporary uh, acts. The Mona Lisa is a great example, it had been said before, how come that this painting from the 16th century became a pop icon? How come that uh, uh, a painting uh, done 500 years ago is the most Instagrammable, uh, the most present on uh, social network and, and TikTok? This is the question we are asking and this is uh, one of the uh, things that will uh, develop here. Just a remark that what you'll see here is a linear projection of content. The exhibition is uh, taking place in a space where uh, public is inv in invited to have a journey. Um, you'll see at the beginning some images to explain how it works when people are exploring this, the space of the exhibition uh, and then the, 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 the videos that tell the story. Uh, the exhibition was shown in Marseille. Uh, it was finished three weeks ago for the last uh, five months and so you won't be able to see it right away but it's uh, going to travel around the world for the uh, next few years and I hope you can catch it somewhere wherever you go uh, and if you are coming to Paris soon you are all invited to our new venue that we are opening in 10 days time at the Place de la Bastille Grand Palais Immersive will show this new format of exhibition uh, for the next years at, this, at, at the heart of Paris with a new exhibition uh, about Venice. So, uh, yeah, you're all invited and, <laughs> and uh, let's see the... Uh <laughs>
exhibition. It's time to welcome our host in the exhibition. Please welcome with me on stage Christelle Tellier, the head of the production, together with Vincent de Vieux. He is the curator of the 16th century for Italian paintings in the Louvre. Thank you very much. project and what's the purpose of this show? So first, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, thanks uh, to the Ars Electronica uh, Center for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here with you and to present our work on the Mona Lisa. The, I should say the main idea of the project was to give uh, special access to uh, the Mona Lisa. Everybody knows of the Mona Lisa painting. It's the most famous painting in the world. Everybody thinks he knows everything about the, the story of the painting, about the image. It's a clear idea. We, ha we have all in mind the Mona Lisa painting. You have immediately something in your uh, mind, something very really specific. Uh, it, it is only with that painting. But it's also something very specific with the, with the Mona Lisa. Once you are in the Louvre, you want to see uh, the painting, but you're not alone, as you know. <laughs> it's a big room. There are every day something like 30,000 people who also want to, to see the painting, so it's quite crowded. It's difficult to have access to the painting because you're not alone, because there is a lot of uh, rumor, and because the painting remains far from you. So the goal of the exhibition was first to give you an opportunity to have a real dialogue with the painting. When Leonardo da Vinci painted the, the work five, more than 500 uh, years ago, he clearly wanted to give life to his painting, not only a physical but also a, a psychological life to the Mona Lisa, to that woman living in Florence at that time, Lisa Gerardini del Giocondo, and he wanted to create a real dialogue between a work of art, the Mona Lisa, and uh, the viewer. This is no more possible today because of the celebrity of the painting. And thanks to that kind of project, it is an opportunity to not only explain the story, why the painting is such a myth, and how it was built, or the story of the painting, but also an occasion to have an access uh, to, the, to the work and to have also the possibility to have that kind of dialogue, that poetical dialogue with a work of art, with that very famous work uh, of art. So. So this project is the result of a great collaboration between the Louvre, and thanks to the institution, and the Réunion du Musée National Grand Palais, Grand Palais Immersif. And as you've seen, unfortunately, we couldn't bring the total experience here for this space, but um, the total experience for the public was to enter a room with a huge projection of landscape, what we call the landscape skin, uh, made, built uh, from fifth, uh, five, from five, sorry, uh, paintings, landscape paintings from Leonardo, uh, except the one from the, the Joconde. And um, so the public was uh, surrounded totally by this huge projection of the, the Leonardo uh, natural, uh, uh, identity and uh, totally immersive. You could uh, walk uh, uh, by the, the landscape. And then uh, the narration uh, was built by and projected by six films that we will see now. And then another level of interaction with a smaller uh, screen for all type of public, children like uh, adults which could um, introduce more details, an interactive experience, and uh, allow you to to learn more about this subject because we talk, we could talk hours and hours about it. So let's uh, start with the first film, the origin of the myth, and uh, get back close to Leonardo and Lisa Gerardini.
ठीक है So this was just a beginning, just to understand why and how it became a myth since Leonardo was living. Uh, he already was painting the, the, the work and it was already something admired by most of uh, the people who, are, who had access to the, the painting. And thanks to that first historian of art, Giorgio Vasari, who wrote a fundamental text on the painting. But then we wanted also to explain why the Mona Lisa is such a masterpiece and why and how it became a masterpiece and, and, and why. Uh, many visitors of the Louvre uh, entering the room, the Salle des Etats, the room where the Mona Lisa are sometimes a little bit disappointed. Oh, it's not a big painting, it's, it's famous but it's small and it's just a woman smiling, there is not a lot of things to see. And we clearly wanted to explain in the next movie why this portrait is more than a simple portrait, a simple portrait. So. Let's have a look why. <laughs>
Donc ce film nous montre comment Léonard, euh, le génie de, de, de cette œuvre, de ce portrait et sa renommée, euh, est incarné, il représente l'humanité, la vie, il l'insuffle par la composition dans son, dans, de ce portrait, mais bien au-delà, techniquement. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so into... The subject, Mona Lisa. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, I was just saying that th this film uh, just uh, relates how oh, oh, oh genius is Leonardo in this portrait and how he, he shows uh, humanity, life uh, through, through the portrait of this, uh, of this woman. But far beyond, even in the technique, we will discover now things to all the technology analyses that we can uh, make today how uh, the, he re he the revolutionary painting he created with his fumato under observation
This is my favorite. This was my favorite movie because it's a, a really specific day during the year. Each year, one day we we organize that kind of uh, scientific examination. It is a privilege for us to assist to that moment. It was very so important to give access to a general public to that moment, very specific, where we can understand in a better way how the Mona Lisa is done, how it, it was done, and what it is its condition uh, today. Maybe later we'll have a, a closer look to, uh, to the condition also. The next uh, uh, film is on the story of the Mona Lisa after uh, Leonardo's death and how it became uh, the most uh, famous uh, portrait. Many artists, many painters, not only pa painters, after uh, uh, Leonardo's death, used uh, that portrait as a model for their own uh, creation. At the beginning of the story, they were really fascinated by uh, the image, and then, uh, during the 20th century, they started also to play with uh, that portrait. And this is the story we wanted to, to, to start. We will see now.
So, as you can see, she really belongs to human consciousness. She, she drives people uh, obsessed by her. It can be creative or artist, but sometimes it can be worse. And that's what brings us to the, the anecdote, the, the part of her story, when she's been stolen.
this was not the most uh, remarkable moment in the history of the Louvre Museum, but uh, that's part of the life of the, of the painting. And, uh, and it's clearly a moment important in the way the work became uh, the most famous uh, painting uh, in the world. And for the end of uh, the, the, the project, we clearly wanted to have a, a more contemporary uh, uh, focus, a moment uh, in uh, the, the actual uh, creation. And it's called Mona Lisa Mania to explain and to show how the work is used uh, every day in several, uh, for several purposes in several uh, media and, and it tries, only tries to show the, the importance of that uh, mania. The last one.
one two verify ready to resume the count and go for launch. Say go or no go. O T C. Go. T D C. You've got to go. T T C. T T C is go. L P S. Go. Flight. Flight is go. Pilot. Come, come with me. <laughs> so this was the, the end of the, of the project with a more contemporary uh, 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 moment and to show how uh, she's used uh, uh, for business, but also in terms of artistic also uh, uh, life. And uh, I don't know if I think we, unfortunately, we have uh, some question. Okay, so if you, if you have some question, we, we will be happy to... Ah, uh, yes, yes. We, we also, yes, maybe... Sh because the, the visitors were able to to have a, a, a personal access to the painting and to, to to be able to see each detail of the of the of the painting, something you you can't see in uh, in a normal uh, way. And to after the uh, the visit, once you were able to know all the story and also the the, the, the material of the painting, you were able to have a, a, a personal conversation with the painting and to observe uh, the several uh, detail explained uh, in the film. Uh, uh, for example, here the, the, the condition of the painting with the several cracks huh, during uh, its uh, long uh, life, uh, the, the, the movement of the uh, wood panel uh, created that kind of cracks. Uh, the small uh, uh, also on the eye, still on the eye, is, you can see here uh, a small, because the painting is in really good condition, but you can see here a small loss of uh, the very uh, the, uh, um, layer of uh, sfumato. You see here the clearer uh, uh, place here. It's a lack, a small lack in the shadow of, uh, uh, of the eye. And uh, the crack, for example, in the upper part, you can see the, the upper part is quite nice. You have here the beginning of the, of the crack. This is why the Mona Lisa never travels, because we are quite afraid the crack could go uh, on the face of uh, the Mona Lisa, and it goes all here. Here you can also have a, a vision. Usually there is a frame uh, in the normal condition, and the frame hides the, the upper part of the painting. And you, if we go, yes, if we have, you can zoom inside, you can see still the, the, the varnish, the several layers of varnish uh, are less in a better condition, and you can still he see here the wonderful uh, uh, ultramarine blue of the sky, because here you see how it, is, it became green, but under those layers of varnish, the painting is in a really good condition, and there is a wonderful blue you can see in, in, uh, in, in uh, some losses of the varnish. You can see uh, in several places that wonderful blue uh, of the sky, which today it's, it's green because of those layers of old discolored uh, varnish. And because the, the, the painting hasn't been restored uh, since a long, 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 long period of time. Uh, and uh, it was also an occasion uh, to see the wonderful technique of uh, Leonardo in the way he built the, the, the landscape with that effects of you know, disappearance of uh, the contours of uh, the mountains, the way he creates the lake also. And if we go, we can see also in not only the face, but also the, the wonderful hands of the Mona Lisa all the transparent veils also of the common, and also the, the armchair, which is almost today not easily visible because of, of the layers of the varnish. With the, the, this, this image, it was, it's easier to understand the, all the, 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 the composition. Also, some, for example, here, this is one of the uh, moments, a terrible moment uh, in uh, Mona Lisa's life in uh, 1956. A crazy man uh, uh, attacked the Mona Lisa with a stone, and uh, she had a, she was protected by a, a glass. But unfortunately, we had so small, very small, tiny losses of original paint layer, and you can see here the repaints done by uh, the conservator had done in 1956. Uh, and, and so on. I, I could speak uh, <laughs> for hours on the, on the painting. So now if you have a few questions, it will be, if it's possible, still, if we still have time, I don't know. <laughs> time is running because it's <laughs> too interesting to listen to you. But uh, thank you very much for bringing this wonderful piece to Linz, uh, also again to Her Excellency. And the good news is that 
now Linz is also home of Mona Lisa, so we can add another episode in this in this movie because we are very fortunate to have uh, the Mona Lisa in this gigapixel uh, image for at least half a year on presence here in the Ars Electronica Center, and we will have for sure many great hours with her. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you very much for thank bringing you her. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for you, and uh, have a wonderful day here at the Ars Electronica Festival. Bye bye.